So my name is Ed Runyon, and um, I'm here to talk to you about cell phone photography. Um, you've probably asked yourself if, like, how how can you take better photos? How can I get my photos to look like maybe my friends next to me that's taking these like amazing photos? I often ask people if they think having a better camera, like a more expensive camera or a bigger camera will yield better photos. And to some extent that is true, but to some extent it's really about the light that you're capturing. It's about the angles that you're shooting at, uh, the composition that you're thinking about, so lots and lots of different things. So I am a wedding photographer, commercial photographer, um, but I started out just like pretty much everybody else. I didn't go to school for this. I just started researching YouTube videos and just learning as much as I could. Um, so I had this thought that gear made the photographer. So the more stuff that I got, the more lighting equipment that I got would be sufficient to be a photographer. But I found out that the more knowledge you gain, it's, it's the photographer that makes the gear. It's the person that really makes that gear necessary. So a little bit about my work. Um, wedding photography. My wife and I really, really like to shoot um, photos that you don't necessarily see everybody else take. So a lot of night photography. Um, and believe it or not, this was just two lights that we used. One behind them and one off to the side. So, so a little bit of commercial photography as well. Food, sports, and things like that. So this is a little fun shot that I actually did in my basement which is just coffee and shaving cream. So there's no beer in there at all. So later we'll go through some editing so you can take just kind of a random photo and enhance the colors and play with some composition and cropping and things like that. So every phone's different. Um, the newer phones coming out today are pretty extraordinary. Um, so I know that like some people are going to have cameras that are 10 years old. Some are going to have brand new yesterday. And the ones coming out yesterday are leaps and bounds better technology-wise. But all in all, the, the foundations of photography are still the same. So if you apply those to any camera you have, you can take better photos. Um, and those, those foundations are lighting, composition, um, and editing. And feel free to ask questions anytime. So the things that you can do with your phone and the things that you can't are Sometimes self-explanatory, sometimes they don't make any sense. But phones are marketed in such a way for selfies, uh, landscapes, most likely a little bit of food photography because lots and lots of people like Instagram and sharing stuff like that, uh, Facebook. And what I call natural light. Um, lots of people will tend to use their on-camera flash and that's what I consider not natural light. So anything as an outside light source. It could even be another phone's camera flash as long as you're using it separate from that camera. Uh, the things that I don't recommend using your cell phone for are night photos, um, taking a photo with the intention to print it out bigger than what the phone is capable of. Um, 
extreme environments, and that can be anything from shooting outside in the winter for long periods of time, or in really, really humid conditions for long periods of time. Just those, those phones really aren't meant for that. Uh, a fast paced shooting, kind of like sports. So if you have kids that, you know, they're in soccer or something, it's very, very difficult to get something like that. And difficult lighting situations, similar to extreme environments, but let's say you're at the beach and you want to take a picture of your yourself doing a selfie, but the sun is behind you. Depending on the position of that sun, the photo is going to turn out pretty pretty terrible. Like your, your face is going to be very, very dark and the sun's going to be very, very bright. Yes, yes. So lighting, lighting is is by far the most vital aspect of photography. Um, you can take just this really pristine scene, but if your lighting is not right, you're not going to get the detail that you're looking for, or you're just not going to get. You're not going to be able to convey like the emotion that you're looking for. So. Black dogs in general are probably the hardest thing to photograph. This is our dog in, in our living room. And I had the window open behind her. And obviously it's very difficult to even see her face because of how I shot it. So making some very simple changes, I got down lower, closer. I closed the window behind her and I opened a window to the side of her. That's all I did, like all my settings were the same. This photo hasn't been edited at all. And it can go farther from, from this, but that's kind of an example of just making some small changes. So the best times for light, and this is across the board, even if you're using a camera like this for your cell phone, um, Overcast days in our 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after sunrise and sunset. Those are what's called the golden hours. That's what photographers call the golden hour. And uh, if you're going to be indoors, try and position yourself next to a large window or um, some kind of bright light that's inside but specifically to the side of you or right behind you. So if your subject is in front of you, your light needs to be somewhat behind you or beside of you. Composition is one of those things that you can, you can do before and after editing. So while you're taking a photo, you can have the mindset of, this is my subject, where do I want it to be within the frame? As far as editing side, you can change that later. Um, and we can go over that too. So an example of center center framing. Um, I knew that I would have these lines leading into the subject. They're called leading lines. There's also a aspect of it's kind of like a horizon. It's not really a landscape photo, but this this line right here is a horizon, and that's on the lower thirds of the of the frame. And then obviously my camera is in the center of the subject, center of the frame. So the this is filling the frame. This is the upper upper right third, also leading lines. And this is kind of an overall concept of the rule of thirds. So anytime you're focusing in on one subject, you, you typically want your subject on any one of these cross lines. So for example, if it was a portrait of, of somebody and their, their eye is showing, you would typically want your their eye 
centered on one of these lines, either in a cross section or in the middle, but still on the line. Um, with landscape photography, you're going to want your horizon on either the lower third or the upper third. Placing it on the upper third would give more concentration on the land, and the lower third would be more concentration on the sky. So, I often ask people when they when they ask me uh, what kind of camera should I buy, I always ask them the same question: Do you want to edit photos, or do you just enjoy taking photos? If they tell me I just enjoy taking photos, I say, just keep your cell phone. Because if you don't want to take the time to edit, that's fine. You just need to know that um, if I take a photo with this and if I take a photo with this, they're, they're going to look very, very similar if I don't make the time to edit just a little bit. So with that said, if you're just going to use your cell phone, uh, these are some of the apps that I recommend. I personally use the Lightroom app, which is partially a free app, but it's also a paid app as well. So some of the features inside that app will be extra. But we're going to go over probably um, Maybe these two, the Polar and the Snapseed, if they're, if we have time. And so, we're going to open Snapseed. Snapseed is a free app. That's my cat. And this was kind of a similar situation with my dog. The, the window's right behind me. She's looking very, very happy, I know. Um, so in here, you go to Tools. Actually, first off, this, this app is kind of going to simulate Instagram. A lot of them will. They will start off with these looks or filters that's just kind of like a one click and you're done type of a thing. That's fine. You can choose to, to start with that as a starting point and then tweak it, just kind of like Instagram is kind of made. Or you can go to the tools section, which is what I like. Because in here, you're going to see lots and lots of different things that will help you control and fine tune the, the image. So I'm going to start off with Tune Image. And right at the top it says Brightness. You just slide to the left or right to change your, basically, your overall exposure. So I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit. What I did is I clicked these little sliders at the bottom again, and I'm going to Play with the contrast and bring that up just a little bit. I find the key for editing is just very small adjustments. When you go kind of really crazy with adjustments, your, your photo will tend to look very, very strange. So with saturation, saturation is a very, um, it can be a very touchy thing. Because some applications, I don't believe this one has it. Some applications will show saturation and vibrance. Vibrance and saturation are very similar, but they're, they can be very different things. So, for example, this one, I'm actually going to raise the saturation just a little bit, where in other apps, I would probably lower the saturation. The ambience, I'm going to raise just the hair. The highlights, my style, I almost always bring the highlights down a little bit. 
they can tend to be a little distracting. And the shadows, I'm going to bring down just a little bit too. And as far as the warmth, that's going to, the warmth is going to convey a very specific emotion in your photos. If I cool it down, it can be a very, hence the, the phrase cool, it can be a very cold photo. Um, your subject can look kind of lonely in the photo, or if you warm it up, it can be kind of a, a more happy and emotional photo, if that makes sense. So I'm not going to mess with that too much, just warm it up just a hair. And I'll hit the check mark. That is kind of, that's the, the foundation of the first part of editing. And with just about any one of these apps, if you press and hold on the photo, it'll show you the before and the after. So that's before, and that's after. And as you're editing, you don't really see how much is changing until you see the before and after. Probably the last thing that I would show people is cropping. And this goes back to the rule of thirds. So the cat's eye is almost right in the center of the frame. Most of the time, that's where you're going to want it. However, I kind of feel like this top section is a little distracting. So I'm going to bring that down. In fact, I will probably make this a landscape photo. And placing her eye back into the center. Don't like it? So my wife doesn't like it. So we'll change that. We'll do... So what I did, I didn't like the cropping, so I hit this little arrow to hit undo. Change it right back. We'll do something like that. That's much better. So, and then from there you can you can export, you can share it externally, you can save it back on your phone, you can put it on Instagram or Facebook, anything like that. I, since I have a little bit more time, I'm going to go to the Polar app because it's very important that people shop around for the apps and find the one that kind of fits the style and the knowledge base of what you're at because every app's just a little bit different and they actually edit the photo in a different way. I was not aware of this until recently. Um, so it's very important that you that you uh, search around for the app that works for you. So we're going to take the same photo. So right away you can see it's it's slightly different. The filters on the bottom are back like kind of the Instagram filters, but light is like those sliders on Snapseed. So we're going to bring the dehaze tool over a little bit. I'm going to go through this really quickly. Bring the exposure up just a hair. I'm actually going to bring the exposure down a little bit. I tell people very often when you're getting into editing, just play with stuff because it takes quite a bit of time to really kind of get your the, the look that you're going for and understand what sliders do what. I'm going to bring the contrast up a hair. Bring the highlights down. I'm going to bring the shadows up a little bit. Bring the whites up a little bit and the blacks down a little bit. 
in color. So we'll warm it up just like we did in Snapseed. And as far as the tint goes, you can kind of simulate some Instagram filters with, with tint. Bring the vibrance up. So in this app, it shows vibrance and saturation. Um, I, I tell people saturation is, it's kind of the level of detail that you will see in the colors, but vibrance is how bright the colors are going to be. So if you bring your saturation way up, you're actually going to lose detail in the colors. But if you bring the vibrance up, you'll get a little bit more bright, snappy looking colors. But there's a very fine play and balance between the two. So for example, if I take my saturation and go all the way up, you see the blue blanket just looks very strange. And if I bring vibrance all the way up, things are start, starting to really look odd. So if I bring my saturation back down, that's where things are starting to look just a lot more pleasing. I'll bring my vibrance down just a little bit more. So that is the after. And that's the before. And to compare the two apps, that's Snapseed. And that's Polar. Uh, I actually don't know how well it's going to show up on the TV, but to me, they look completely different. Yeah. You like that one better? I do too. Personally, I do like Snapseed the best out of probably all the free apps. Um, they have the most features for, for very little cost. And I believe that's available on any platform, Microsoft, Android, and, and Apple. Okay, and that is about it. So if you have any questions,